Hello and welcome to another Cup of Joe. It's actually been... Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually been a very busy morning. Uh, that's my first cup of coffee of the day. And I'm pretty sure it's like noon. Also, I hope you'll pardon me, but I, um, I'm not using the lav mic today. Uh, I just really wanted to throw this together and also see how this audio sounds. Um, there might be some like extra rustling or hopefully not some echoiness, but I just want to try this out because it's super easy for me to just turn this mic on, turn that on and record. Um, so yeah, uh, it's actually really interesting coming into this because uh, making it the New Year's resolution to do this every week. Uh, <coughs> don't breathe your coffee. <coughs> Making this a New Year's resolution actually makes it a lot easier for me to feel comfortable about uh, uh, just like doing this more often. Um, it's the interesting thing about being in a position where you're doing like all of the work in the business is that time management becomes really tricky and everything I do, um, I kind of like look at it and go, okay, is that going to directly grow the business uh, in the short and the long term? And you can certainly make an argument that this will be good for the business in the long term, but that's a really hard thing to measure. And there are other things that are far more effective at doing that kind of thing. <sighs> mm -hmm. Before I keep going, because my mind just jumped onto this, this is the same coffee as last week, actually. Um, getting through the rest of the bag of that uh, mocha java uh, that I mentioned. Nothing new yet. Um, but, so yeah, time management. Obviously, this is... This is a really good thing, and I'm doing this for a reason. Um, but just the fact that I said I would do it every week, and I feel um, uh, like there's a good amount of accountability here. <laughs> like, y'all are watching me. Y'all are expecting it. Uh, that's perfect. Um, I'm going to be far more likely to keep doing it, especially in the times when uh, it feels really challenging. So hopefully I'll be able to keep recording with this camera and, you know, good audio, but sometimes, again, I might go with phone. Uh, another reason why this is the first cup of coffee for me today, aside from it being really busy, I wanted to save my coffee for this recording. Um, kind of, you know, I like, I like the whole sharing the cup with you. Uh, but also, I'm, like, right after I finish recording this, I'm going to go visit... Uh, our good friends at Boon Boona have opened up their cafe finally. Today is their grand opening. Uh, I'm kind of missing the official grand opening, which is from 9 to noon, but they're open the whole day. Uh, I'll, link to, I'll link to them in the description of this video. If you happen to be in the uh, Pacific Northwest and the Seattle area, they, their new cafe is in Renton. Uh, so if you happen to be around, you can check them out. Um, you'll be able to, to experience the East African coffee ceremony there. That's really exciting. Uh, I'm actually going to be looking forward to bringing you along with that at some point, uh, not as a cup of Joe segment, but just as its own video, uh, by itself. When I did the East African coffee ceremony in, well, I can't even remember what issue it was. It was a while ago, but we did an issue of the magazine that was all about that. And it was, uh, it was Ephraim his family uh, and Boon Boona that we worked with to put together all the photos and learn about the whole ceremony and that sort of thing and share it with you. Um, and I actually did take a video of that, but it's a really weird video. I might still put it up. It's basically a video of just, there's no sound to it. So it's a video of the ceremony. Uh, I mean, there's really bad sound. Uh, so it's a video of the ceremony going on and me taking pictures of it. So it's kind of a weird video. But the one I want to do is going to be an actual, like, I, I'm going to, well, it's going to be a well-made video of the ceremony. Um, so I'm going to be looking forward to doing that. 
actually had a concept that I wrote down. Again, my notes, uh, which are really chicken scratchy right now. Um, this idea, which has come up a couple times in other conversations I've had, about making sure that you don't let marketing teach and sell you at the same time. Uh, I've also phrased that before as don't let uh, don't let yourself buy from marketing that teaches you. This is kind of a difficult thing to uh, kind of explain without concrete examples or also experience yourself. I think mostly it's the, the experiencing yourself that you need. But in essence, a, a process of marketing and selling that's pretty popular is to say, hey, did you know such and such about this thing? Uh, and then they'll teach you a little bit, and it's really interesting because when you learn stuff, you get really engaged, and it builds a connection with the person you're learning from. I do that, <laughs> I like, but I like teaching, and a lot I teach all the stuff that I know. I like to share, uh, and that builds a really great connection. Uh, but that's the first half of of a lot of marketing tactics because they'll start with that, and then they'll say, "Oh, uh, by the way." That new thing that you just learned, we have the perfect thing to solve that problem. You know, it's usually they're teaching you about a problem that you may not have known before. This is probably already sounding familiar. And then as you learn about this problem, you might be thinking, oh, I never, I never really looked at it that way, or I didn't know that's what the problem was, or that makes perfect sense. Uh, because when you when you get into making solid marketing, you get all the data, you're interacting with people, you're learning about their interests. It's really, uh, I guess, easy to build uh, words, to write copy, to build conversation that really connects deeply with the segment of people that that marketing is looking to connect with. Um, if you, if you see something that's like a business marketing themselves and you feel really deeply connected with it, it's probably because they've done a lot of work to figure out uh, what it is that interests you and people like you and how to speak to those interests. Um, the, and, and I think a lot of that, I'm getting off on some tangents here, a lot of that gets a bit of a bad rap because there are... I think a lot of businesses and marketers that are pretty amoral about their approach to marketing, their interest is make money. Let's do that in the most efficient way. Um, that in itself is relatively neutral, but I think it ends up getting you into really questionably moral situations. Um, I don't, I don't really hold to that, but one of those questionably moral situations is marketing that says, hey, let me teach you this new thing, uh, this new problem that you didn't know existed. Oh, by the way, I have the perfect solution for that. It's $97.95, you know, whatever. Um, and that, that kind of practice works enough a percentage of the time that a lot of businesses are built that way. It's effective. And I think a big reason why it's effective is that we as consumers... And maybe this is this is a, a challenge with, um, this is something that's uh, maybe highlighted or enhanced by the by the massive amount of connectivity and information load that we have with our technology now. But we as consumers do not allow ourselves time to be aware of what exactly we're learning and why, like. We don't we often don't sit back and say, okay, let me digest this new piece of information before I make any judgments or before I integrate that with my own reality. Uh, it's really easy to, to integrate new bits of information into your reality without understanding why they should be there or how they fit into your own life. Um, and honestly, I think the only answer to that is just self-awareness. Um, being aware of those kinds of things. And so I, I mean, I guess I'm kind of a, kind of a skeptic 
when it comes to to these kinds of things. Um, I hold to a lot of old intellectual ideals and if ever I'm learning something, my first reaction to it is usually skeptical. Uh, I'll, I'll take in the information, I'll consider it, but then I'll try to look for the sources. I'll try to find the understanding. Because to me, understanding is far more interesting than the information. And you can't have a total understanding of something when you're learning about it for the first time. That's just impossible. There's too much depth to everything in the world to get a good understanding of something at the moment that you learn it. So, again, just to bring this all back without rambling on on different tangents for a long time, don't let yourself buy from marketing that is teaching you. Try to be aware when you see... Uh, when you see an advertisement, when you see any kind of communication that's coming from a business, any kind, uh, even if it seems like totally personal, ask yourself, are they trying to teach me something? Am I learning something new? And if either of those things is true, take a step back and think about the source of that information and try to learn from separate sources to verify or put it in the context of your own life before making any decisions beyond that. Um, I feel like if that was the common approach, then life would be very different, but um, who knows? It also feels like just battling human nature. <laughs> um, anyways. My approach to marketing, I... I love teaching. I, I think that marketing that is teaching is not bad. I think it's great. I think that uh, marketing is about connecting with people, providing them something that improves the value of their lives, uh, be it a little bit of information, an understanding of an experience, something like that. That is the start of a relationship. And then you nurture that relationship by providing more things that people need, that people desire. Um, you help people better their lives, I believe. That is what should be done. And then from there, you're running a business. Uh, from there, you have a relationship. Then you can say, hey, this is what we do. Do you want to be a part of it? That's what I do. I have the magazine. You can always go subscribe to the magazine. Um, but I'm never going to sit here and try to structure things in a way that makes you think that the magazine is an answer to like a problem that you have or all of your desires. Um, it's a really awesome thing. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, that's my approach. <laughs> and then if you want to just keep listening to me ramble about stuff and not subscribe to the magazine, that's great. I'll keep doing that. Uh, honestly, um, I care, but I don't. <laughs> that's a, it's a interesting uh, realization. Anyways, I'll probably ramble more along uh, my thoughts and theories about marketing and stuff in future videos. Um, it's kind of what I do all the time. So it's interesting to have an outlet where I can just explore those concepts. Anyways, this has been a cup of Joe, second cup of Joe of 2019, the second week. Uh, so far, so good on my streak. <laughs> Let me know what you think about subject ideas like this. I have a gigantic list, so I should be good to talk uh, to great lengths about different concepts that are not coffee related, but um, related to what I do and myself. And well, I guess ultimately everything comes back to coffee anyways, doesn't it? Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave your comments below. Always happy to talk. I'll see you in the next one.